But first, the Democratic National Committee said today Russian government hackers have penetrated its computer network. Breaches by two separate groups allowed hackers to access emails, internal chats, and opposition research. Democrats have compiled on presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump. Hackers may have had access for a year. The Washington Post reported that computer networks for Hillary Clinton and Trump were also targeted. We get some insight on how this happened and why from Dmitry Aperovich. He's the founder of CrowdStrike, the intelligence company that investigated the breach for the DNC, and Sasha Eisenberg, a contributor for Bloomberg Politics and author of the book The Victory Lab, The Secret Science of Winning Campaigns. Dmitry Aperovich, how significant an intrusion was this into the Democratic Party's files? This was a pretty sophisticated intrusion, and in fact, there were two intrusions in place here. Two separate Russian government-affiliated actors, we believe, that are part of the intelligence services of Russia, infiltrated the network first in the summer of last year, were able to get access to the communication service at the DNC, essentially giving them ability to monitor the email traffic that was going through those servers, and a completely separate actor that penetrated that network in April of this year and went straight for the research department, the Democratic National Committee, specifically looking for the opposition files on uh, the Republican uh, presidential candidate, Donald Trump. How did the DNC find out? How were they alerted to this intrusion and how were you? Well, in early May, uh, they discovered that there was something off on the network that, they, that was highly suspicious, and they called us in. Their to internal in, in, in IT people. Their internal IT people determined that something may be off. They didn't yet know if it was a breach. They asked us to come in and evaluate, and within 24 hours, we were able to ascertain with our software deployed on all their machines there was, in fact, two breaches from two separate Russian intelligence services that were inside that network. Sasha Eisenberg, you wrote a book about how dependent campaigns have become on data and, on, and the things needed to support that amount of data, specifically about the 2008 Obama campaign. So in this case, what kinds of things exist in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in, in these records? Yeah, you know, parties at this point are largely hubs of, of information. They gather intelligence on the electorate, on... Uh, data on individual voters that they use to make tactical decisions. And then they are kind of a permanent research operation, especially at times like this where there uh, are open primaries within a party and you don't know who the nominee is going to be. And the DNC is basically says to the Clinton campaign or the Sanders or O'Malley campaigns, you know, we will spend the year building resources for you that we can hand to you when you're the nominee. In this case, you know, a dossier on Donald Trump um, Probably the DNC has more information in its uh, files on its servers than any other organization that's been researching Donald Trump for an hour, uh, for, for a year, pardon me. And not just Trump, but his circle, his advisors, his staffers. And so a foreign intelligence organization that wants to understand uh, who those people are, the relationships they have, potential points of leverage or influence, would probably find that the DNC uh, has more of it sitting around than, than anyone else. Now, Sasha, it should be said that Clinton's campaign says that they were not compromised, which doesn't mean that, that information that they, as you point out, have on file with the DNC was not compromised. But we're not talking about financial or donor records here, are we? From what we gather from the reports, and, and, and as Dimitri says, it, it seems like there was a goal to go to the opposition research department. Um, you know, somebody like Hillary Clinton, who has been in public life for a while, you have to imagine that, that uh, foreign intelligence gathering operations have tried to gather information on her so that they can try to game out how she thinks and how she approaches things and who her uh, contacts are. Uh, Donald Trump is sort of new to the world as a, as a political figure. And so for foreign governments that want to assess risk, uh, geopolitical decision making, or potentially uh, understand uh, how to get at him, um, you imagine that the DNC uh, just has that information available. It's, mm -hmm. A lot of this is, is stuff that is in the public domain. So from court filings, from but from, it's all uh, but it's all in reports. one place. It's all in one place, and they've done a lot of the legwork for you, Mr. Alperovich. Why do we think Russia is behind this? Well, we actually believe it's not just Russia, but two specific intelligence agencies within Russia. One is the military intelligence agency called the GRU, and the other possibly the FSB, which is a successor to the Soviet KGB. It's actually interesting because we saw no collaboration whatsoever between those two threat one, actors. One hand didn't know what the other was doing. Um, not only did they not know what they were doing, they were actually doing some of the same things repeatedly, not knowing that someone already had that information that they were after.
And this is actually not unusual for Russia. They have a very aggressive competition between their intelligence agencies. They're always trying to one-up one another to look better in front of Putin, to get more budget, more, more power. But how, what is, use is this kind of information, especially if a lot of it's in the public record anyhow? What use is, uh, it, is it to foreign governments like Russia? Well, one, um, they really want to understand what is Donald Trump thinking. No one knows, really. He doesn't have a long history in politics. He said some complimentary things of Putin. You know, is that something that he's going to continue if he's president uh, following that policy? But the other thing is that's interesting is they probably didn't know what they would find. They didn't know that the, all this information is public. In the Russian, uh, um, uh, in, in, in Russia, you have political parties that are engaged in all kinds of nefarious activities, and they may just assume that in America it works the exact same way. And what do you do to stop it from happening again? Well, uh, this weekend, we actually did a complete remediation of that network. We cleaned it up. We kicked out both adversaries uh, simultaneously. So as of uh, this week, that network is now clean, and DNC actually asked us to monitor it with our software going forward because we are pretty certain that the Russians are going to try to regain access to that network. Their interest in the political system of the United States certainly is not going to go away. And, and, Sasha, what do campaigns do as they become more and more dependent on this kind of electronic web of information to protect themselves? Well, you know, we saw a different type of data breach at the DNC six months ago when a Bernie Sanders staffer was found to have been able to access information that the Clinton campaign had, had developed on individual voters. You know, that type of tactical information, you imagine, is not of much use to foreign governments. And I, and I suspect that foreign governments will find that um, a lot of the information that, that they would get through an opposition research department uh, isn't particularly strategically valuable. And the goal of opposition research ultimately is to get this stuff into the public eye. And so if the DNC thought that it was revealing about Donald Trump, they'd probably be similarly angling to get it out into public. This, this is not information that's, that's designed to be kept under wraps for too long if it's tasty. And the RNC should be worried as well, I imagine. Sasha, Sasha Eisenberg of Bloomberg Politics and author of The Victory Lab and Dmitry Alperovich of CrowdStrike. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thanks, Wynne.